Time again for Talking Dogs with Ian Grand, dog trainer at Vermont Dog Boarding and Behavior on VFW Drive in Hyde Park, the show that delves into the behavior, training, socialization, and nutrition of your dog, and is a presentation of Guy's Farm and Yard with locations in Morrisville, Montpelier, Williston, and St. Albans. And we're back again with the trainer, Ian Grant, and we all hope that everyone's dogs had a very nice and safe Valentine's Day. At least that's what we're hoping for anyway. Yes, yeah. Yeah. We don't want to hear any bad stories. Yeah, that's right. And, of course, I only assume that uh, if any dogs had chocolate for Valentine's Day, it was unauthorized. Yes. (laughs) Please, I hope so. (laughs) Yeah, so. As we move our way through this uh, month of February, today we're going to talk about separation anxiety. Now, what do you mean by separation anxiety? So separation anxiety is one of those terms, uh, and I think it's used probably just a little too much, But it's usually very easily diagnosed, meaning you cannot get away from your dog even inside your own house. You mean he or she follows you everywhere? He or she follows you everywhere. Uh, This usually comes out during training sessions. We see it with dogs. We can kind of get an idea of what's going on. Uh, We can get an idea of what's going on with it if we do our classes, which you've done before uh, with us. The cases can get pretty severe uh, just from, you know, if you're just sitting on your couch at night watching TV and you've got to get up and go get something to drink, your dog will actually have to get up and go with you because that separation anxiety can get pretty strong. Uh, That's on the mild case. The severe cases of what I've heard is sometimes the owner will actually have to go take a shower and the dog will actually stick the head stick their head into the curtain into the shower and want to be there with their owner. So why why do they feel like they have to be with their owner all the time? It's like they, it's not like when the shower it's not you're not going to come back or anything like that. Right. And if they shut their door then they the bathroom door then they may scratch or claw at the door cuz they yeah. just they have to be with you. Uh, to me, this is just more of a, of a symptom than it is the actual problem. I think the symptom is, has to do with the relationship, not that there's anything bad or, or something that the owner is doing wrong. I think this is something that you can do to fix it. So we have a, an exercise called impulse control training, uh, and we just put up a link to it on our website because I feel like, you know, there's certain things that come out as, you know, clients have questions. For me, in the last few weeks, it's, I just feel like I've been hitting, been getting hit by lefts and rights of separation anxiety. So mm. I wanted to put that out there to, to let let everybody know. So on our learn page on the VermontDogTrainer.com, I've got a video on actually how to work with your dog during this impulse control session. You know, and the tough part about a separation anxiety is well, not the tough tough part, but it's a catch twenty two. Is that your dog never wants to leave your side? So a lot of times these dogs are actually very good off leash outside because. They don't want to be a, they don't away want to from leave. you. Yep. So, so that's a good thing. That's the good thing. That's the that's the catch twenty two part. Inside right. the house, it's bad. Outside, yeah, it's good. Normally, it's the exact opposite. Right. So how common is it? I think it's more common than what we think. I don't think I can put an exact answer on that. I think a lot of people, you know, go through it. Uh, there's a number of clients that I've helped in the last few weeks that. You know, like I said, the dog followed them room to room, and now it's getting to the point where through these impulse control sessions, uh, they can actually go up one floor of their house or another, and their dog isn't following them anymore. Mm. And that's a huge change in the dog's brain as far as knowing that they're safe. They don't actually have to be with their owner. You know, they're looking at their owner kind of like a security blanket. Like, you can't leave me because it's, uh, things aren't going to be safe here without you. Right. So when you said, so when I was asking you about how common it is, uh, how, how much of it do you see as part of your uh, training job? I would probably say in all the training dogs between classes and the board and trains that we do, I, would, I, would, I think a good safe number is 25 to 30 percent of the dogs we see are actually experience it with their owners. Right. To the point where... Some owners can't get two feet away from their dog, and it mm. can get, and then it just can get worse and worse, and mm. it becomes a snowball effect. Yeah, so pun what, intended. Right. Yeah, I saw that. So, what do you do about it? So, the impulse control session is basically putting your dog onto a bed or a place, a designated area. If you want to give them a stay command, that's fine, and just back away facing them and keep them in that spot, and only do this for about ten or fifteen minutes at a time. Walk around a little bit. Um, you will find out exactly how far away you can get from your dog. Some, again, severe cases, a person may not be able to back up two steps without their dog wanting to be with them. It's It can get that bad. Mm. But obviously with work, with repetition, doing this maybe 
once or twice a day. If you can do it for 30 days, I think at the end of that month, you know, it sounds like a lot, but I, you know, with the severe cases, I think you'd, you'd be really surprised at the progress that you can make in those 30 days. Right. You know, from getting to another room without your dog getting up to a different level of the house. Hmm. So is this something that has to be continuous or in time will the dog start to get it? I think if you put in that solid 30 days, I think you've built a really good foundation for your dog to learn that, you know, you don't have to follow me around the house. Mm. And these are actually the new rules of the house. So you're actually being told not to do this anymore. Yeah. Okay. So, and of course, during supper time, they'll be right next to you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to worry about finding them then. That's what you just yell out supper and there they come. Yeah. All right. So uh, we'll be back with a question from Katie in the doggy bag coming up in just a moment here on Talking Dogs. Back with Talking Dogs with Ian Grant. All right. Katie in Waterbury asks, Ian, my lab gets jealous when I pet our German shepherd. He will move right between myself and the shepherd. So what can I do? Of course, jealousy can be a little bit of a problem, can it? It can. And this is another one of those words we tend to humanize our dogs a lot. To me, you know, this is when, you know, the lab is trying to control the situation. And oftentimes I will look at this situation and and think, okay, so probably Katie is the lab's resource, meaning the lab feels like he owns Katie. And in that way, if some other dog or other person comes over, he's going to get in between to make sure that he's controlling that scenario and that environment and be able to push the other dog out of that situation. So this can get tough, but I think what I would probably advise Katie to do is that uh, when she's petting her shepherd and the lab is starting over, that's when she makes her correction sound, whether it's a no or a hey or a uh uh-uh, something along those lines that tells uh, the lab that this isn't allowed anymore. Mm. So it's it, it can be a tough situation, but <laughs> <laughs> just in time we've got a visitor. Uh, just in time for talking dogs, uh, Petey's yeah, just stopped in this morning. Probably had a little bit of advice to give us, so maybe we'll have Petey co-host a show one day. That we'll find out. So now great. let me just follow up on this question of my own for a second. Now we have a cat, mm-hmm. and our uh, dog when it gets uh, in our bedroom will not let the cat in. Yeah, and, and sometimes it gets a little. She gets a little aggressive. Yeah. So, uh, so what do we do about that? It's correcting your dog as soon as you see the change. So as soon as you see the cat come around the corner and your dog's body language changes, like it's heading towards the cat. There's something there. There, there will be a trigger. It might take you a few times to recognize that first signal. And then. Make your correction sound. Is she up on the bed at that time? Uh, yes. Yeah, so yeah. probably she needs to get down off the bed during that time. Oh, okay. So if she reacts, to me, that would be the correction. She needs to get off the bed. Okay. So she learns that if she corrects the cat or if she makes an effort towards the cat, that means you have to get off the bed, too. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, Katie, you and I both had our questions answered today. <laughs> yep. And a reminder also that uh, next weekend you've got your complicated canines workshop. Yep. Next weekend, uh, the 25th and 26th of February up at the Hyde Park VF. It's 9 to 4 both days. Uh, and I think we're still looking at about 100 to 150 people that will be in attendance that uh, who knew? I, I, I'm still humbled by the amount of people that want to come and learn and, right. now, and uh, educate themselves. Right. Now, this is the one that was originally scheduled for last month and has yeah. been rescheduled. So, yep. uh, so. Yep. Still get that enthusiasm. Well, that's good. Yeah, to hear, ready so. to go. All right. So, and again, if you want to find out more about what Ian does, go to his website, which is again VermontDogTrainer.com. All right. And uh, next week we will be getting into aggression, not. Ian and I, but right. uh, <laughs> that would be bad. Go, that would not be a good. <laughs> might example. be good radio, but yeah, might, but not, maybe not. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, complicated canines uh, workshop, which we mentioned earlier, we're going to uh, talk more about aggression and in what way. Uh, dog to dog aggression, okay. uh, dog to human aggression, right? Uh, and just basically, why do we hear so much about it? Yeah, exactly, and how to avoid it too. Yeah. When we get back together again on uh, Talking Dogs with Ian Grant, trainer at Vermont Dog Boarding and Behavior. And again, to find out more, you can go to vermontdogtrainer.com. And we're a presentation of Guy's Farm and Yard with locations in Morrisville, Montpelier, Williston, and St. Albans. And for the trainer, Ian Grant, I'm Roland LaJoy, and we are Talking Dogs. Talking Dogs.